Well hello there my little YouTuberinos, I'm Dave, and what do you call a guy with two thumbs and a penchant for all things hardware? Jacob! And what are we up to today, Jacob? We're showing off some of the cutest ickle gaming PC builds you can make from a tiny GPU-less Raven Ridge machine, all the way up to a 20-thread mini monster with a GTX 1080. So one of the best things about the PC is its innate versatility. You can tailor your bespoke PC build to suit your own needs and your own tastes. I spend a lot of time unnecessarily digging around in my PC, and so I like to have a monstrous case sat on my desk that gives me space to work. And of course you need all those vital RGB LEDs too, right? Yeah, of course. But sometimes you want a PC that's not seen and not heard, and thanks to AMD's new Raven Ridge platform, you can create some absolutely minuscule gaming machines. Tiny. And you don't need to compromise to build your mini rig either. There are some small form factor machines that can house full scale components in their TARDIS like innards. And the actual process of putting the machine together doesn't differ that greatly to a full size build, so you can check out our standard build guide below. For a mini rig, component choice is the most important thing. So, let's do a PC, shall we? Yep, let's do it. Let's do it! The unprecedented graphical power of AMD's latest desktop APUs means that you can build a gaming PC that doesn't need to have a discrete graphics card plugged into it. Yeah, and that's pretty good timing considering the cost and scarcity of current GPUs, and the fact that Nvidia reckon that's going to continue on until Q3 this year. That's between July and September for us normies. Yeah. There are also more mini ITX boards coming along the AM4 platform too. Mini ITX is the smallest of the mainstream motherboards, with the Micro ATX being a bit of a middle ground between those and the big boy ATX boards, and the absolute unit of an E ATX board. And your choice of chassis and of motherboard will directly affect just how small you can go with your mini build. We've paired this up with the Inwin Shopping case with the MSI B350i Pro AC to create the smallest of our gaming rigs. So we went for the Chopin, as it comes with a built-in 150 watt PSU, which delivers just enough juice to keep that Ryzen 5 2400G APU running, even with both the CPU and GPU components overclocked. Power has to be a key consideration when you're putting together your mini build, as does the cooling. The ultra low profile Noctua L9A is almost the only AM4 cooler we could have used for this machine because of the limited space available inside this chassis. Word of warning however, no matter what chassis you choose, when you're building at this scale be prepared to absolutely hate it when you're building into it. Yeah, the components aren't really an issue, they fit in without much problem, especially when some of the smart design that Inwin have used, but it's those nasty fat long cables that will drive you mad. And have you unscrewing and removing the motherboard over and over again to get the cable routing just so. In total, this Wii build runs to about £625 or $639, but if you opted for a slightly different mini ITX board and a 250GB SSD instead, you could get it down to about $530 or $584. And for that, you get a rig which is capable of hitting 50fps on average in GTA 5 at 1080p on high settings. With more modern games, you'll have to drop your resolution down to 720p to get some decent gaming performance. But if you're just after this as an esports level machine, then it will absolutely fly in the likes of Overwatch, League of Legends, and Dota. Ugh. You might be surprised at just what you can fit into a chassis that's this small, but thanks to the advances in mini ITX motherboards and the use of intelligent partitioning and the ribbon cables, you can squeeze a high-end gaming machine into something this big. Yeah, the Colink Rocket case. Well, yeah, it's small. The Colink Rocket case isn't that much bigger than the Inwin chassis, but the performance difference in the two PCs is massive. A key difference, however, is that you're going to need a special SFX power supply, as the Colink doesn't come with one out of the box. Yeah, so we've got a relatively cheap 300 watt PSU from Silverstone here in this machine, and that will be enough to do to power the GTX 1060 graphics card that we've got running inside it. For a more powerful graphics card, though, you're going to need something around the range of 450 to 500 watts. But then you could go for something as powerful as the small form factor Zotac GTX 1080 Ti. Just imagine. And just look how cute these SFX units are, they're like scale models of a real PSU. Because of the way the Kohling chassis is partitioned, we can install the mini ITX motherboard on this side, with the same low profile Noctua cooler sitting comfortably under the mesh, and have the full size GTX 1060 sat on the other side. The riser cable is essentially just an extension cable for the PCIe 3.0 slot, and shouldn't have any detrimental impact on the gaming performance of your card. If it wasn't for the ventilation issue, I'd love to have a little Perspex panel right here. <laughs> Hello you! Because we've got that discrete GPU inside doing all the graphical brunt work, we've opted for an AMD Ryzen 5 1600 CPU to go alongside it. All told, that means you're looking at about £1,115 or $1,020 for the full build. But that gives you this machine with 12 threads of processing power, as well as some serious 1440p gaming chops. And with a 1080p screen, you can play pretty much all the latest games at the highest settings without batting an eyelid, at 50 frames per second. That's how quickly you blink. 
so quickly you blink. If you're not desperate to squeeze a PC into a shoebox and are prepared for a little heft without the full ATX tower aesthetic, then the lovely NZXT H200i or the slightly larger fractal design Mini C will be perfect. The H200i is purely a Mini ITX case, so that means we can use the same AMD motherboard that we have for the other two small form factor builds. The fractal case, however, will also take the larger micro ATX motherboards, and that means we can make the step up to an X299 board and a 20 thread Core i9 processor. <laughs> The real benefit of both these cases is that motherboard aside, you can use standard scale PC components throughout. That means you can go for a full size power supply, beefy graphics cards and more serious cooling. You can drop in a monstrous air cooler or even a 120mm liquid chip chiller should you desire. Or a 240mm one as well. True. That means there's practically no compromise with this sort of small form factor build. And because you're not having to pay a premium for specialist mini components, you can save a bit of cash too. With an X299 Micro ATX motherboard, such as the powerful MSI Gaming Pro we've got here, we can even go all out and drop in a GTX 1080 Ti. We've chosen the super cute Zotac mini version to show that you can still get maximum power from a tiny footprint, but this fractal chassis could still take an even bigger card. And with that sort of componentry inside, you're looking at an absolutely heroic gaming PC, with the processing power to act as a serious streaming and computational box too. But you are looking at a rig here that costs around £2,700 or $3,200. But then this highlights the only compromise you need to make is on the size of your motherboard. Hell, you could even squeeze another GTX 1080 Ti in here if you really wanted to. So that's how easy it is to create a tiny gaming PC, whether you're building on a budget or looking to create a monster rig with a minuscule footprint. The only thing standing in the way is your imagination. Yeah, well, that and your bank balance. Mini or not, a three grand PC is still a three grand PC. So thanks for watching and remember, if you like what you've seen today, give us a like and subscribe for more gaming goodness here and on the PC Games N website. Oh, thanks for watching. Bye.